Welcome to bsdtutorial.org. Today we will have a look at how we can install and use port 3 inside of OpenBSD. So first of all we would like to download port 3 to be able to use it. So to do this you need to have an OpenBSD machine with an internet connection. I would say that since we're going to download the file and not use it after we've been extracting it, I would like to say we can go to the temporary folder by typing cd slash tmp. When we are standing in a temporary directory, we can enter the ftp command, which is ftp followed by ftp colon slash slash ftp.openbsd.org slash pub and then openbsd slash and the version number this needs to match the version that you're running right now so in my case it's 5.3 and then ports.tar.gz when I press return now we are going to enter the FTP site and download the file ports.tar.gz which is an archive that's compressed this might take some time to download depending on your connection and how near you are the mirror So when the file has been downloaded, you're going to use a command which will extract the archive. And it's followed like this. tar xzf, name of the package, which is this one. And then you do like this. You make a flag which is a caption C. And this tells that we want to put it in a path somewhere. And the path we want to put it is in usr. So type this command and this will extract the archive to USR. So we will end up having slash USR slash ports. And uh, this might take some time so I suggest that you can pause the video while uh, the system has, com uh, has extracted it. So when the files has been extracted we should be able to enter this directory by typing cd slash usr slash ports. In this folder, I'm going to clear the screen to be able to show better. In this folder, you will find some more folders, but that was not a good explanation. I should do like this. In this folder, you have some subdirectories, as you can see. And uh, all these subdirectories are like uh, programs which we can... Uh, install, uh, but they are not yet compiled, so we need to enter one of the directory we want to enter, and then, for example, let's say we want to to compile Vim and install it, then we need to go to the directory editors. But first, before we go there, I would like to show you how you can search inside of the ports tree. So this is one way if I want to search for the Vim editor. Then I'm standing inside of slash usr slash ports, and then I type make search key equals and I haven't tried this but I'm going to try to wrap it in double quotations and it works of course uh, as it should do but I'm getting a little bit too much text here so I'm going to do the same command but I'm going to take the option more instead and here we can see some information Let's see, we can try to do like this. We can take this one. Here we have a port called Vim 7.3 and it has uh, the name NoX11. And the path here is in editors slash Vim. And uh, I'm going to show how we can reach that folder. You don't have to do this search as I did, but I just wanted to illustrate that there is a search function inside of ports. So if I clear the screen and I enter, I'm going to take the full path now. USR, ports, and then editors, and then Vim. We are now standing in this directory, and in here we have some files, as you can see. I'm going to show them in a nice alignment like that. And you can see we have a make file, for example, as you can see over here. So the program is not yet compiled but we are standing in the program in the ports. So this is a structure which we can use for compiling our program and then installing it. So I would say that 
the easiest way to do here would be one command which is make install. Uh, I will not explain in detail what make is. I would just say that make is a program that will use the make file to be able to compile the file and install it because in the make file are all the instruction sets which are needed. So I think that the best explanation is if you use make install uh, it will download the source, the source files, the source code, it will compile and when it's compiled to binaries it will install it into the right place on the computer. I won't, unfortunately, uh, I won't have time to compile this but I'm going to show you a little bit how it looks like. When you run this command it's going to download the source files and once the source file and all the dependencies, which means dependencies are programs that are dependent of other programs to be able to run which means that if you're going to install one program and it's depending on three others three other program has to be installed before this gets installed because they are dependent on each other so it will download source files it will compile them to binaries and then they will be installed and after it has been installed uh, you will end up having some compiled files into this folder inside and there is a command to remove the old files. Uh, I will show you what that is. So I don't have time, unfortunately, to show you a complete uh, compilation here. And uh, when this has been done, but now I aborted it, uh, you can run a command called make clean, which will clean up the folder of compiled files and uh, then if you for example want to remove the source code that was downloaded you use the command make clean as before but an equal dist so that removes the for example source code the distribution files that will be called if a program has let's say that i've been installing vim i could do a command in this folder called make uninstall this will uninstall but we haven't installed a package of course that's why we're getting an error but that command will uninstall the program and if you want to update your program if you want to see if there is a version update you make make update uh, and that will update but all you have to remember I would say right now because most of the commands you will see on the internet you get accustomed to them but make install to install and you need to stand in the directory of the program you want to install and make clean cleans up the directory after installation you could write make install clean which would mean make the, comp uh, the compilation install the files and then clean the directory and uh, that will uh, run everything in a sequence then so when you're searching the internet for some information of like let's say that you're searching for that you want to install for example Apache uh, or example the Vim editor is a good example here also that this comes with some uh, some configuration sets which means that Vim can be compiled in different flavors which are like different settings uh, in OpenBSD we are calling them flavors and if you want to show to see which flavors exist for a port for example we are standing in the directory of Vim editor right now you can run the command make show equals flavors and then you're getting all the flavors here as you can see and for example, no x11 is a flavor. If you want to install it without any graphical, just to have the console without user interface. And uh, if you want to install, let's say with um, with a flavor selection, then uh, I haven't tried this myself. I have found it on the internet. Uh, so I haven't tested it yet, but we can try it right now to see if it works. 
in case it would be any errors later on, I will update the video. But this is what I got the information of. env flavor equals, <clears throat> and then we put uh, no underscore x11, and then followed by make install. Uh, if everything goes correct here, which would be that we set the variable flavors to no x11 and then we make the compilation, the installation here. So that should be the way to, uh, to uh, select a flavor. There are of course one way more if you want to make some settings in the ports uh, when it comes to configuration of flavors which are like different way to compile the same program so the other way is some packages and if you want uh, to read more about it I would suggest you to read on the OpenBSD manual pages there uh, not sure if you will run into sub packages a lot because most I've seen flavor used but if you see sub packages then you will know what it's all about that it's a sort of a configuration of how you want to install the program so unfortunately I cannot finish the compilation of this uh, program right now because it takes way too much time but uh, that's everything you need to know right now about how to use the port collection and I'm sure and I hope that this video was useful and uh, that you will uh, be able to use ports now and uh, above all to get the files, uh, which I thought was a little bit tricky in the beginning. But uh, one thing to mention is that compiling with ports, uh, I mean compiling in general, takes a lot of time. And so I suggest, and that's also what the OpenBSD team suggests, that you use the pkg add command instead. Uh, we got video tutorials on that, which explains how you can search, how you can install and deinstall. Uh, we will cover updates later in OpenBSD, but uh, that's everything I can spare th this information then. So uh, I hope this video was useful and uh, hope to see you next time.